All right, uh, this is a follow-up video from my uh, other video that I had uh, that explained how I was connecting uh, my Node.js app up to the home automation system I have, which is a Clipsaw system. Anyway, the Clipsaw system is kind of kind of nice. You can there's a module you can get that will allow you to create a Telnet session into it and send and receive commands. Um, so anyway, I wanted to expose an HTTP interface into that so that I could do other things um, from a web app or from whatever. Uh, so Node was my natural uh, tool of choice to make that happen. So anyway, uh, here's the Node app. It's a pretty simple app. I am um, using Express for the HTML stuff and uh, Socket.io handles the real-time backend so that uh, the the interface is real time as for when lights are turning on and off. Um, kind of the same sort of stuff as last time. I'm going to post this up on GitHub and you can take a look at it, ask any questions if you have them. But basically we come in, we, we initialize a set of loads um, and uh, then we just go ahead and uh, connect up uh, our uh, stream. And, and then anytime that incoming packets happen on the stream, we process those. Um, and pretty basic, here's the web server portion. Create a web server and serve a static HTML document that has some AJAX that makes calls to some of these uh, endpoints to uh, control stuff or to read devices and so forth and so on. And anyway, um, kind of pretty basic stuff, but um, I'm going to fire it up. It's about 100, I don't know, 150 lines of code. Uh, I'm going to fire it up here though, I'll show you guys. Okay, so I just fired up and you can see that there's uh, messages that are kind of already popping in here. Um, and anytime a message is received, it processes it and pushes it back out the real-time channel. So the interface is kind of basic when it loads this is it it basically the first thing it does when it loads is it goes out there and and pulls a list of devices uh, it pulls this list right here and it and basically there it's the device all the devices on the network and what their current status is and then it builds out some some stuff and the green stuff is the stuff that's on and the the uh, red stuff is the stuff that's off so as i get real-time stuff happening in here it'll feed into into the uh, um, developer console here that you can see so uh, eventually I'll have all these labeled and in, in a nice map and all those types of things this is just kind of prove a concept but so group 51 I happen to know is my is my room here so if I go ahead and hit that it'll turn off if I hit it, it goes on so it's pr there's there's really very very little lag I don't know if you can see the light going on and off, but you can see it over here in the in the console what's happening, um, and it feeds in these objects that basically tell my browser what to do: update status zero one or one zero, depending on if it's on or off. Um, so anyway, uh, kind of cool. It also updates, you know, when I go and click on, like I'll go turn the light off from the wall. So I turn that off, and then you see group 51 came off. And I go ahead and I turn it on from the click, and it's on. So anyway, kind of a real-time thing. I can pull this URL up in my uh, mobile phone or iPad, and it works great. So anyway, next steps are uh, organizing this information a little bit. Oh, I'll show you the HTML page. It's pretty basic as well. Um, the HTML page just like I said when it fires up it grabs the devices um, and then loops over the devices finding ones that are actually on my network it only lists the ones and gives it a status of red or green depending on what it is and then and then it just listens for messages from the socket from socket IO and uh, and does its thing here there's a function for a clicker but that's only about 75 lines of, of uh, code Gotta love uh, Node and uh, all this JavaScript stuff. Pretty awesome.